Good morning, guys. It's Brent with Likens Motorsports. I have my radio voice this morning because uh, the Ohio Valley weather is just that kind of kind of crummy. You never know what you're going to get. Temperature swings both ways, and it ends up messes with your sinus cavity, and you sound like this. But uh, so this morning, I wanted to um, do something completely different uh, than what we've done before. Last week we did a top five of my uh, favorite uh, engine combinations. This week we're going to do a uh, complete engine build from start to finish in one video starting with the, um, the, the engine and the teardown and ending with a dyno video. So we'll see how that goes. But if you remember from about five months ago um, I got a 351 Cleveland in from a, uh, a local customer with a 1970 Mustang. And uh, the engine had failed, had some major problems. We didn't uh, exactly know what happened until we got inside of it. But uh, it was very apparent what was, uh, what was going on after, after we cracked it open had some uh, really bad either uh, overheating issues which led to detonation or uh, detonation, detonation issues but uh, either way it busted some pistons up and uh, killed some cylinders and just made a general mess out of things so if you want to go back and, and review um, some of the build videos for, for, this, uh, for this engine build uh, they were about five months ago in July, so had a series of engine builds, or I'm sorry, a series of videos that kind of go over each detail of the build and show the progress. So the customer dropped this engine off, and um, from you know a, a 10 foot view, it was a completely stock 1970 351 Cleveland engine, and and I truly believe that. Um, it had never been in two before, maybe some gasket changes, but uh, it had original Ford Fomoco bearings and uh, just everything was uh, period from, from 1970. So he, he had told me that uh, there was some kind of a catastrophic failure. So uh, we started doing disassembly and uh, taking things off one part at a time. And then eventually it was uh, very apparent that it had uh, detonated. Either that was the source or the result. I'm not really for sure still at this point. But uh, the result was some busted up pistons and some, some nasty cylinder walls. So the way that we do things is once the engine is completely disassembled, um, everything that we're going to reused goes in a pile. Everything that we throw away goes in the trash can. Um, and then every major component gets reworked. So this is our engine block after uh, total machine work. And the machine work process basically goes like this. The block and the heads are pressure tested and magnafluxed. Uh, that happens after they are ran through um, this bake and tumble process so that the, the parts look as clean as they possibly can so that we can see you know cracks and evidence of issues. Um, the block is then treated to uh, all the machine work processes so uh, you know on all of my engines the mains get a line honed, the decks get square decked um, the block at least gets honed with torque plates, if not bored, and then honed with torque plates. Um, any oil uh, oiling modifications are done at that point. For the Cleveland, there's not really much that you have to do uh, for this level. Just blend that oil pump hole in. Um, and I like to uh, tap that big hole in the front main for a pipe plug. Uh, it's just a redundant oil source that you don't need and that's really about all that you have to do to to a Cleveland for you know a, a 6,000 6,500 RPM you know up to you know 
450, 500 horsepower deal. There's not really not that much that you have to do to it. So we use some ARP main fasteners. In most cases, you can get away with bolts. Uh, ARP bolts are very strong. Uh, only in extreme cases do we use studs. But um, once the block is finished, then it is uh, uh, completely cleaned and detailed. The bottoms of the cylinder skirts are are deburred. Uh, we do any deburring to casting flash if necessary. Cam bearings are put in, uh, freeze plugs are put in, and the block is painted. Now for the bottom end, uh, we were able to use the factory crank, and believe it or not, it was uh, in perfect shape, and we didn't have to turn it or anything. We just did a, a polish on it to uh, uh, get everything back to uh, you know a, a nice surface finish. So we were able to use uh, stock bearings on on the mains and rods, which was really nice. The rods, um, because of the detonation issues with the pistons, were were scrapped. Um, there were a couple rods that are just really in bad shape. And once you get into uh, situations where you're having to you know, R and R every every single rod, change rod bolts, change uh, you know, install bushings, that sort of thing. Sometimes it's just better off to uh, to switch to a a brand new aftermarket rod. So uh, Eagle Rods are the only people that uh, the only company that make factory replacement rods for for the Cleveland, except for um, it's either I think Crower. I think Crower makes some really high-end uh, Cleveland rods, but so we were able to reuse the the factory cranks. Uh, the factory crank is really strong, hard to tear those up, and uh, use some Eagle aftermarket rods, and we use some uh, Race Tech custom pistons. Race Tech usually gets a lot of my custom piston work, and they just do a really good job. So as you can see, this is just a stock compression height uh, piston with a little bit of a dish in it. And um, we need to get, needed to get that compression ratio down because I think that factory compression ratio was probably why, or one of the reasons why the engine was melted down. So race tech pistons with a modern metric ring pack, and we are good to go with that. So on the cylinder head side of things, uh, they get baked and tumbled as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, so does the intake manifold, and it comes out looking pretty much like new. Uh, but the cylinder heads get completely reworked. So uh, baked and tumbled, brought down to a, a newer cast iron finish. Uh, brand new valves, I either go to uh, SI valves, Ferrea, or Manly. Those are the three big guys that I use. We stayed with the factory valve sizes on, on this engine, 2190-173. Uh, we used some uh, valve springs set up for the hydraulic roller cam. Uh, changed to bronze valve guides so that we could use a modern Viton valve seal. Uh, this particular engine used some tool steel retainers, as you can see in the picture there. And uh, brand new uh, guide plates and rocker arm studs. Uh, manly guide plates and ARP rocker arm studs. So the head is, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, pressure tested, magnafluxed. Uh, the decks are surfaced, valve job, and uh, essentially they come out looking like new. This particular engine did not have any port work done. And, um, you know, uh, approximately, you know, 290, 300 CFM cylinder head will support. Uh, a lot of cubic inches in, in a small block form. So generally no port work done and uh, just a good performing engine will result from that. So once all the major components are, are freshened up, the block, the cylinder heads, crank, that sort of thing, we, we can start uh, the assembly process and that generally begins with uh, getting the crank in the block and uh, at least one rod and piston assembly along with the camshaft. So this particular engine used a custom hydraulic roller camshaft. Um, comp was out of cores. I had to go to Bullet 
and um, what happened was I I think I specified a either a 112 or 113 lobe separation angle and they messed up and did it on a 109 um, so you know generally Cleveland's like overlap so um, you know if you don't have a, an application that is centered on manifold vacuum the engine will benefit from that extra overlap so I talked with a customer he said no problem I can run a vacuum reservoir for my brakes and uh, we uh, proceeded on with the 109 lobe separation and uh, I think it made a stronger engine because of it uh, in the past when I've tested different uh, Cleveland combinations and camshafts uh, those big intake ports along with the tunnel port FE's and the tunnel port small block forwards as well they like a lot of overlap so um, camshaft is degreed and then um, uh, the short block is assembled you can see the new brass restrictor plate down inside the uh, the, the water neck area there and uh, that replaces the old uh, nasty one that's usually popped out so that the block can be thoroughly cleaned alright so on the under side of things we used a milling oil pump along with a uh, new factory style uh, replacement oil pan and pickup um, everything gets painted and, and, and primed first and since this engine was meant to be factory appearing uh, I did scrounge up a set of uh, 1970 stamp steel valve covers and uh, was able to get those in here and the entire engine painted and primed together once that's done um, then it's time to set up the rocker arm geometry. We went with some roller rockers from Comp Cams, and were able to um, get the get the uh, valve train geometry nailed in tight. Just takes uh, well. Sometimes it takes a little bit. Sometimes it just takes a couple of sweeps. But uh, that's very important to get done to make sure that everything is happy and lives uh, the way that it needs to live without any issues. I had the factory distributor all cleaned up and uh, recurved and fitted with a Protronics kit, uh, new distributor cap, uh, new factory replacement water pump. We went with a uh, we the the factory replace or I'm sorry the factory harmonic balancer was in excellent shape so just cleaned it and painted it and we went with a uh, a new or new to me uh, factory style carburetor from Drew Pajadnik at uh, Air Fuel Spark and then we end up with uh, this combination here so a, a factory appearing engine with a lot of goodies inside that help to make more horsepower uh, doesn't take a lot to make more horsepower we're you know under 10 to 1 compression uh, the cam was in the high 220s uh, at 50,000 duration and uh, it just doesn't take a lot. It just takes some good machine work, some uh, careful measuring and uh, specking out the correct parts, and uh, then you're rewarded with a with a nice performing engine. So, if anyone's uh, curious, uh, you know, factory tins. No, I don't reuse the factory valley pan or that that intake manifold gasket that acts as a, as a valley pan. Uh, not necessary. Uh, factory oil slinger, also not necessary. Those were done away with by Ford in the in the upper 70s uh, when uh, timing cover seal technology improved and timing chain technology improved. So you will not see me use any factory tins in in any of my engines from Cleveland's to Windsor's to FE's. And once the engine is done, uh, you know, bypass hoses are on, uh, valve cover breathers, that sort of thing, it's time to uh, put some heat in it and uh, spin her up. I use Dell Mirrors Racing Engines in uh, Buffalo, Kentucky, the dyno, all my engines. He's been doing all my engine work, all my engine dyno work since uh, about 2008, I think. So 
I've had a long running history with him and uh, a good uh, even mannered dino, which is good. You don't want one that's uh, overly liberal or uh, overly conservative. So get them on the pump, uh, put some heat in them, break them in for a few minutes, and then put some pulls on it. So here is uh, at the dyno video of the pull. Uh, again, with the right camshaft and everything on these engines, you don't need to spin them to the moon. Uh, remember, this is a street engine, so you know we're hitting about 6,000 RPM here. So as you heard there, the engine started uh, basically almost before he let off the starter button. So uh, Drew does really good work with the carburetor stuff. Generally don't have to, uh, to tweak much. Uh, just a very quick start and then we're off. That pull was to about 6,000 RPM. That engine made 430 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 430 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. So... You know, generally speaking, when people think of Cleveland's, you know, they think, oh, we got to rev them to the moon to make horsepower. Uh, they don't make torque because of the, the big intake ports. Um, you know, I, I proved that wrong on a, on a pretty consistent basis with the Cleveland stuff. So just takes the right combination and camshaft and, um, you know, 430 horsepower with the factory uh, four barrel cast iron intake, you know, that's... That's a that's a pretty nice little engine, and it uh, looks like uh, looks like straight out of 1970 from from the outside. So uh, I do a lot of Cleveland stuff. Maybe I can put up some more uh, start to finish builds uh, of the Cleveland stuff. Maybe I'll do the little 354 cubic inch dyno mule next time, so that you guys can see what goes into a little bit hotter Cleveland. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, it's about Christmas time, so hope you're uh, having some good quality time with your family. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, hope to see you or uh, talk to you next week. And uh, until then, I will. I will. Uh, I'll see you soon.